All new edition of the Pro Wrestling Show. What a breakthrough we have for you as we recap everything that happens this past week on Pro Wrestling for the Monday Night Ring Report, where Randy Orton still refuses to say what about Edge and leaves us guessing. Also on the SmackDown Ring Report, man, Roman Reigns and King Corbin continue their feud as King Corbin wants one more match. And plus, Goldberg returns to SmackDown and he declares who's next. And on AEW Ring Report, as John Moxley and Chris Jericho continue their feud for the AEW title, Mind Games, you won't believe what John Moxley did. And Cody and MJF in a most, I want to say, the most best segment AEW ever produced with the 10 lashes. It almost made me cry <laughs> seeing that torture and that pain and so we're talking about that with Cody and MJF the Cody was standing 10 lashes to get a dance on to meet MJF for their pay-per-view match at Revolution we'll tell you that and on the NXT real report as uh, Johnny Gangaro, Johnny Wrestling and Finn Balor continue their feud face to face and the Undisputed Air looks for Kamaso Champa. They finally let's tell y'all that. And on hot topics, finally hot topics, as WWE released their quarters prior since the two vice presidents leaving, we'll give you um, explanation on why the two vice presidents left. Man, you won't believe it's for a short reason. And plus, what does the future hold for WWE with the network? They're saying that a big network wants Fox, a big network wants WrestleMania. Oh, I just gave it a All right, all new Pro Wrestling Show starts right now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to all new edition of the Pro Wrestling Show. I'm your host, as always, Kim Dix here on this week, Sunday. Thank you all for watching Sunday, February 9th. Man, oh, man. Hey. We here at the Pro Wrestling Show. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. Tell a friend, call a friend, subscribe. Subscribe is caring. We make Pro Wrestling for you, the Pro Wrestling Show audience, because we know that you crave it and wrestling matters all across the world. And thank you for watching. Join in the hashtag Pro Wrestling. Join in that conversation. Let's get to the Monday Night Raw Ring Report. All right, the Monday Night Raw Ring Report kicks off with a bang where we talked about last week that Randy Orton did that unspeakable attack on Edge, causing the radar superstar to not be heard or seen since he made his triumphal return to Royal Rumble in that match. Edge was like close to the final four, which impressed him. Man, I thought Edge was going to win. So Edge and Randy Orton wanted to rekindle their friendship and reunite Ray RKO. Well, that was short-lived. And Randy Orton attacked Edge and gave him a concerto, leaving Edge out again. Well, Randy Orton started the show with a promo, but he was acting all weird because he was trying to get up to his signature pose. Didn't want to do a signature pose. Um, he wasn't able to get the words out to explain why he attacked Edge. And Randy Orton just left, left the building. So unanswered questions for Randy Orton about what he did, what he did to Edge. But you know it's going to be something coming. I know this, this is going to be a WrestleMania match. I'm telling you right now how I see it. Also, Liv Morgan went against her foe, Lana, <laughs> and pretty much she beat her real quick, real fast in a hurry. Um, afterwards, Ruby Riot returned to Raw. We thought we was going to see a reunite of the Riot Squad. Now, we know we're telling with Edge and uh, Randy Orton, that wasn't going to happen. It was short-lived with Ruby Riot and, and Liv. Ruby Riot attacked Liv. Laying her out, Liv looking shocked and despondent, and then Ruah walked out, and Lana took the bones and just did her face blush and left her laying. So there's gonna be a lot of unanswered questions about Ruby Wyatt on why she did what she did to that fit. So keep an eye on that Ruby Wyatt versus Liv in the future. Sarah Logan on the same show, so you ain't gonna put Sarah Logan. That could work. 
you add Sarah Logan in there, that you know, side with Ruby, with um, either Ruby or Aaliyah, that kind of you know, boost that up. Also, the Royal Rumble winner, the 2020 Royal Rumble winner, Drew McIntyre was in action as he took on 24 7 champion Mojo Riley with his his insurance policy, Richard Moss at ringside. Um, hey, Drew McIntyre took clean sweep at him, hit the Claiborne kick, got the one, two, three. Drew is on his way to WrestleMania on the road. So Drew looking to make his mark when he faces Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 36. Also, um, six-man tag team match, huge six-man tag team match was Buddy Murphy and the AOP taking on Kevin Owens and the Viking Rays, a former tag team champion. Um, Owens fought back with a three-on-one advantage, but he ultimately lost to Razor. So it was a quick finish, but um, Kevin Owens got a stand on base after the match. So Kevin Owens trying to find himself. We'll see how that go. Also, Alistair Black went one-on-one against Eric Young by pinfall, and uh, he beat him. But following the match, Black reiterated that he's that he's now the one who picks fights and he will cast locker room shadows from the Black Mask. So I don't know what that means, stuff like that. So Alex Black getting himself jockeying for position and stuff. Also, Angel Garza. Angel Garza on behalf of Selena Vega. Selena Vega looked and found she wanted revenge on Herberto Carrillo and what she what he did to a draw the United States champion. Draw is out. Due to the suspension, we talked about that last week. Like they had to write him off the storyline, but um, Selena Vega wanted revenge and she got it. She brought out Angel Garza to get her cousin Roberto Carrillo what he did to a Um, um, he he did did something, but um, Rey Mysterio came out to help and uh, he led the match between him and Garza and. That match ended with Garza gave Mysterio DET on the exposed concrete. Why is everybody doing the concrete thing? Is it? That's sort of like when you do the concrete, it's sort of like you kind of stalling and hitting them in the head. But um, I'll tell you this. I've been following Angel Garza for a long time. Um, he's going to be like the next Eddie Guerrero. I guarantee you. Angel Garza has that charisma, that um, the look, the appeal. So don't look, don't be surprised to be the next Eddie Guerrero. I saw the 2020 Royal Rumble winner from the female women's side, Charlotte Flair, came out there until she was interrupted by NXT Women's Champion Rila Ripley, who gave her a proposal that she couldn't refuse. Uh, she offered the idea that she hasn't beat her. So Charlotte mentioned that she beat Becky and beat Bailey, and she can go for their respective titles. And um, But Ripley says she beat her at Survivor Series, which that's a fact. And Flair to challenge her at WrestleMania. They really Ripley just trying to screw up Charlotte's ego so she can say, hey, Charlotte, you call one on one me at Survivor Series. And I think Charlotte's going to take her on that opportunity. It just, I think Charlotte will make that announcement at TakeOver next week. So speaking of, of TakeOver, they're not going to be, it's going to be two pro wrestling shows next week. It's going to be the second one for each one minus. NXT. NXT will have its own show where we do the predicted outcome for the NXT event. So look out for that next week. Two pro wrestling shows next week. One for just pro wrestling show, a sub NXT re report, but we'll have the NXT predicted outcome show that, that Sunday? Something like that? Yeah, that's Sunday. All right. Also, Oscar went against Natalia in a good, fair, decent match back and forth. Uh, Natalia with those strikes, Oscar with strikes, and both women with hard hitting strikes. But Oscar won by submission and then cut a promo, won a rematch against Becky Lynch. And Becky Lynch came out there with some sunglasses, feeling cocky, feeling arrogant as usual. And Becky Lynch came out and accepted the match. So next week, one on one, Becky Lynch will go one on one against Oscar for the Raw Women's title, a Royal Rumble rematch. So look forward, that's going to be the main event. Tell you. And finally, the triple threat match, the winner meets Brock Lesnar at Super Showdown. All right. Ricochet was in it. Bobby Lashley was in it. And Seth Rollins. 
Now, we know Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar have a history you when know, they had fought each other at WrestleMania last year. And could it happen again? we never seen Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar one-on-one. That could be a dream match. But I wish they would turn Bobby Lashley face. But uh. And then you got Ricochet, which that's kind of a mismatch because Ricochet is smaller than Brock Lesnar. And we're not comparing Ricochet has the technical skills and the high-flying ability, but him matching with Brock Lesnar is a mismatch. Well, Ricochet proved all his critics wrong when he defeated Lashley and Seth Rollins. After Seth Rollins was trying to get his game to eliminate Ricochet and Bobby Lashley so he can go and meet Brock Lesnar. Well, Ricochet overlasted everyone and Ricochet will face Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship at Super Showdown. As a result, Lesnar came out of nowhere and attacked him in the end of the show. Now, this plan to see um, a week before Royal Rumble, if you remember, when Ricochet came out there and called out Bobby Le- Brock Lesnar. And now, also at Royal Rumble, when Ricochet couldn't have a small hand eliminating Brock Lesnar, when Ricochet low blow Brock Lesnar, and Drew McIntyre hit the Claiborne click, eliminating Brock Lesnar over the top rope. And now Brock Lesnar gets his revenge on Ricochet and do so at Super Showdown. This is a huge opportunity for Ricochet receiving a world championship match at this caliber at a big event. So Ricochet, a lot of pressure on him going forward. All right. That ends the Raw Ring Report. Let's move over to the SmackDown Ring Report. The SmackDown Ring Report this week. All right. SmackDown kicked off with a bang where The Miz and John Morrison re-brought, you know, I like to say oldies but goodies, but they re-brought back the Dirt Sheet. The Dirt Sheet was a once popular show on WWE.com, and it was on ECW, SmackDown, and Raw. It kind of um, built itself, built it up to where it is today. The Dirt Sheet came back, and it paired the, the uh, movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which is going for an Oscar tonight with Brad Pitt, um, best picture and best after Brad Pitt. So, um, you know, you know, congratulations and awards for their nominations of their winners, their winners. So, congratulations on that. Award. But they was making a pot parody of that, which it was cool. It had the Miz's father, it had Lance Storm, it um had John Norinitis. So, it had a lot of people on there that made cameo appearances. So, the Miz and Morrison looking for their uh, match at Super Showdown where they want to dethrone the New Day for their SmackDown tag team titles. Could they do so? And the New Day came out there to charge the banner, but we'll see on that effect on how everything is going to affect Super Showdown. I believe we're going to have new world tag team champions on SmackDown with the Miz and Morrison. Also, the Usos came and interrupted the team. The Usos had their own little issues. Um, with Rude and Ziggler, where it was a melee with all four teams around. So it got to the point where Miz, where, um, the Usos, Dolph Ziggler and Bob Rude was in a match. Um, then they're trying to, in that era with Roman and King Corbin, so they kind of play off. So it, it worked for a minute, but at the end, the Usos win the match and they beat Rob Rude and Dolph Ziggler. Well, also, Elias went one on one against Cesaro. Good match. Um, I think Cesaro held his own, but Cesaro, I think in WWE's eyes, that he doesn't have charisma. But Cesaro has charisma. Cesaro, I remember seeing Cesaro on Ring of Honor when Ring of Honor first came on TV. I mean, like when the first game came on Sinclair. And I saw Cesaro hold the man on his shoulders and did the spinning wheel, and he never looked back. So look for Cesaro. Zaro just probably could be a future coach, but I, I think Zaro should, you know, consider like everybody else doing the revival. All right, finally, the man, the myth, the legend, Goldberg returned to SmackDown. He was there via interview. Mike Cole interviewed him and asked him a question: Who's next? All of a sudden, Goldberg wanted his time and attention to Brock, saying that Brock was preoccupied with Ricochet and Drew McIntyre, which is true. But Goldberg turned his attention on when gaining the Universal Championship and its title holder, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt came and made an interruption on his little own little news network. <laughs> uh, 
I just started laughing at that. And um, Bray told him to challenge Sip the Fiend with Sip. So Goldberg versus the Fiend one on one for the Universal Championship. It will happen at Super Showdown. So on the two, on the SmackDown, you have two matches on the SmackDown right now for Super Showdown. Wow. Also, he Slater tried to attempt to check on his friend Daniel Bryan, and you know. That kind of upset Daniel Bryan for a minute. And Daniel Bryan challenged him to a match. And Daniel Bryan beat the you-know-what out of him via submission. Daniel Bryan really the effects of what happened to him at Royal Rumble with the mid, with, um, not me, but the Fiend. So, uh, also, the newly crowned Intercontinental Champion, Braun Strowman, came out there to spoke to the crowd. Until he got jumped by Nakamura, the former tile holder, and Cesaro, and the revival gets involved. So it took five men to attack a giant. <laughs> so look for this feud to continue on with Nakamura and Strowman when Nakamura wants to regain his title. Also, Sheamus went one on one against Apollo Crew, beat him. Sure, G came out there, but Sheamus bro kicked him. From out of nowhere, left him out of place. I'm like, wow, for his efforts. We'll see on that. And finally, the no, finally, the women competing in the SmackDown main event as Bailey looked forward to see who was gonna be her next challenger for her SmackDown women's title. Bailey watched on with the crowd, and Bailey watched as Carmella, Dana Brooke, Naomi, and Alexa Bliss all vied in a faithful way match to see who was going to be the next contender for Bailey's women's title. Well, it was back and forth. Match was so grand. Everybody was thinking that it was going to be Naomi. I thought it was going to be Naomi. Since it's Black History Month, they should have went with Naomi. But ultimately, Naomi lost to Carmella. Carmella got the win, but Carmella got blindsided by Bailey, where Bailey did the attack on her and left her laying, and Bailey was sending a message that nobody is not coming for this, a women's title. So it's got to be intriguing to see that the women's division is getting stronger and stronger in a minute. I like, I'm more, I like the Raw women's division, but the Spanish women's division, it gives you more equal opportunity. Like, you, we thought that, um, Naomi, who returned last week, came from the Royal Rumble, where came back in the fray and got women's top shot. But you know how that go. But I guess it's Corey Graves pulling his screens around or what, what's going on with that. <laughs> but, um, you know, hey, we'll see on that end of note on SmackDown. So there's three women's matches. And the men saying in rumor reports that Roman Reigns and King Corbin will have a match. At Super Showdown, which they will. And then you got the tag team tile match. And then you got the universal tile match. And then you got the women's tile. So four matches under Super Showdown. Under this impressive thing. All right. That is the SmackDown Ring Report. When we return, we're going to talk about hot topics coming up next. As a whole bunch of hot topics. Where we talk about WWE. Next move under the screaming service is WrestleMania going to be on another huge network like the Super Bowl. We'll tell you more. And we'll talk about the NXT ring report and the AEW ring report where Cody took those 10 lashes. Wow. That's all new pro wrestling show returns after this. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Show. I'm your host as always, Kenny Geeks here. Glad you can join us here on the Pro Wrestling Show. Take the time out and tell a friend, call a friend, and just tell them, subscribe. Subscribe is easy. We here on the Pro Wrestling Show make pro wrestling content for you each and every week because we are dedicated. My team is dedicated. We do a lot for you. Pro Wrestling Alliance because we care and wrestling matters here on Connect. 
Thank you all once again for watching. Use the hashtag Pro Wrestling here on Connect as we talk about hot topics. All right, on hot topics this week, man. All right, many of you may not know Brett DiBiase, they, but the DiBiase name does ring a finger, ring a name, I meant to say, where the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, his son has been arrested for fraudulent charges in Mississippi. Well, ooh, this is just Ken Brett DiBiase was for or was a wrestler. He trained in the the um perform not the performance centers, but the uh FCW center when he became a star. And now Brett DiBiase um now has to face charges on criminal charges on fraud and civil. Woo! I guess the million dollar man can't even buy him out now. I guess everybody everybody don't have a price. Uh, even the courts. <laughs> Woo! All right, speaking of that, a politician, a Democrat politician, says that wrestling is fake. Many of the wrestling community went off on him and told him a thing. Even Kane went on here and told him one. I, I would say this, man. Okay, you you can say all that stuff, but then again, when you do say that, you open a can full of worms. So you better know what you're talking about when you do. I'm telling you. Also, speaking of that, there seems to be a dispute going on between WWE and EC3 over the trademark of his name. Well, he owns the trademark. He went through the U.S. patent system, but WWE was simply was trying to own his trademark, but have gave but have given up. So we don't know what this means going forward for WWE and EC3. I know EC3 has not been pushed regularly as he should. With WWE, and you would think since EC3 with that statue, that look, that charisma, you would think WWE would push him to be a mega star. And it's like it's unfortunate that he has to go through that. And uh, once he got his contract, I hope that he goes to like another place, like AEW. Or, um, I don't want to say Impact, but you never know. But I don't know. I really don't know. I, I want him to go to AEW. I want him to be a bigger star in AEW than, than the Impact. And, and WWE has that. If I had to come to EC3, I'm telling you right now, I would sign you. I would sign you, and then you will be a top heel in my company. I'm telling, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. A star like that, I'm telling you. But, you know, he'll, he'll find his niche. He'll find his way. I know. Perfect. Also, WWE has signed Asia Pereira to a contract for a referee spot in NXT. She will become the first African-American referee in WWE history. And what a way of celebrating fit for Black History Month for that moment. Asia Pereira will effectively replace Jessica Carr in her transition to the main roster. This is what uh, affirmative action means. You need to have like different people. Diverse group and WWE is leading on diversity. And kudos to Triple H and everybody else. Speaking of Triple H, Triple H supposedly is making his mission to sign Okada to WWE once his contract expires. Now, many of you might know who Okada is from in New Japan. Okada, the biggest star with the Rainmaker, he calls himself the Rainmaker. Okada can make a lasting impression in WWE with that um, personality. That. He has that Shinsuke Nakamura effect, but then you got the one or two. They're not doing nothing with Nakamura as well. When Nakamura first came, they was doing something with him. And then they just, whoo. I think it's that language barrier, but I feel like, you know, when you have a diverse group, a diverse roster, you are strong than never before. So if Triple H trying to sign them, this would be the right time to sign them. Also, Killer Cross and, um, Timothy, Timothy, Timothy Hatcher has signed with WWE. This has been going on. We knew Killer Cross was WWE bound, and this perfect fit. Killer Cross is going to make an impact on NXT. He's going to make a double impact. Also, Timothy Hatcher, who's been uh, a focal point in MLW as well, he's made his point too. And I can see these two men rugging rough shots in WWE and NXT. But I hope he, they get the same chance in the main roster when they is on NXT. Wow. All right. Speaking of that, um, Rusev is being kept off television while he sort his contract situation if he does not resign. 
Now, Rusev, Paul Heyman trying to convince Rusev to stay. Rusev kind of iffy about it. Rusev want to do his thing. I feel like with Rusev, Rusev knows what Rusev wants. I think the storyline he did with um, Bobby Lash and Lana, it just, uh, I think the storyline could have went that way, but then you could have saw Rusev and La- Lana get back together and made Lash look like a fool like that. That would have been more meaningful than Lash with his baby face like they went to down six. Like he don't need no manager no more because his mouthpieces are turned on and stuff. So I wouldn't went with that. Also, Tommaso Ciampa, we'll talk about later on the NXT report, suffered an injury this week. It's unclear how it will affect his Portland match, so we'll see on that. And uh, also, Tanana Content reportedly walked out of the company after a financial dispute. I don't know what's going on with NXT and stuff, so Tanana, I hope everything's okay. She's a great women's wrestler. We'll see where they go from fear. Also, Bernie Murphy is the latest victim of WWE's fascination. We'll remove someone's name. <laughs> so he's referred just as Murphy. So on the Superstar page, this is the same time WWE removed Buddy from his name only to restore it before. Who knows he'll get his first name back this time. So his name is Murphy. Rollins and Murphy. I'm still going to call him Bernie Murphy at the end of the day because that's what I'm so used to, akin to. And also, um, could WWE be putting WrestleMania on Fox? That's the question many people are asking. Now, Fox going to have to pay a whole bunch of rights fees to get WrestleMania on there. Since they got SmackDown, they're going to have to get more rights fees for, for wrestling. Woo, Fox just, just spewing out money. I'm going to be some Fox money. Fox, help me start. Network will connect, be Connect TV on Fox. <laughs> we'll put all the Fox shows that you want on Connect TV. That, hey, that would be a kicker. Speaking of that, the WWE, Mr. McMahon did a conference call prior to his, um, you know, his two vice presidents, Michelle Wilson and Joy Barrows, got fired last week. McMahon explained that it was a dispute over money. Baranos and, and uh, Wilson wanted to save the money where McMahon wanted to spend. And McMahon is spending money as Brink with WWE and the XFL. So we'll see how these two pet passion projects work, especially the XFL. So we'll see on that note. All right, that ends Hot Topics this week. Let's move forward to the NXT Ring Report. On the NXT Ring Report this week, the Bros of Race kicked off the show. And a tricked out cart dubbed the Broser Weight Mobile. Well, the Nutspeed Air were ready to fight and they wasted no time. And they opted not to after Matt Rim kept toying with them, asking how many Bobby Fishes could fry if Bobby Fish could fish fry. Which that was the most funniest thing. I think Matt Rim was just stone. <laughs> stone. Speaking of that, Angel Garza made his second appearance again. Well, he beat Isaiah Swerve Scott by pinfall, and he's looking forward to want a Cruiserweight Championship match down the road. Um, with Swerve, I don't know what they're doing with Swerve. Swerve was ML, MLW, and he was in the Indies. But maybe, you know, this is best with Swerve. Swerve probably looking at the, the money and keeping it on rolling. Also, throughout the night, the Unspeakable Air was bullying some people backstage, including Kashida and Brunson Reed. I'll attempt to find Tommaso Ciampa. Ciampa eventually got jumped on them and throw after the brawl is sure. William Regal booked a huge six-man tag team match for the main event that night. Also, Dominic Dijovic beat Kelly and Dane by pinfall. So Dijovic will face Keith Lee for the North American title at NXT TakeOver Portland. The two shook hands. And call it mutual. Now, at first, they didn't like each other. Now, they like each other do partner in Survivor Series. Now, it's like I remind you that next week's um, Pro Wrestling Show, we have two shows separate. We'll have our separate show minus NXT. We'll have a show specifically for NXT for the predicted outcome. So, look out for that. Also, Finn Balor and Johnny Garo had a video promo exchange face to face, you know, to hype their takeover match. Where John Garo called out Finn Balor of just, you know, the old, and he's not gonna, he's not the main roster Finn Balor. He wants to Finn Balor for NXT in Japan. So Finn Balor said, you're gonna get that and more. So we'll see when these two break it down next week. 
Also, Mercedes Martinez, when he gets Casey, the returning Casey Casarano, beat up and um, pinned her real quick. Uh, also, Jordan Devlin went against Tyler Breeze by pinfall, beat him there. Also, Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley had a verbal exchange, good verbal exchange, all town themselves as their future prospects. Well, Charlotte drew the eye of Bianca Bell when she did this. And said that she's she wasn't inviting to the conversation for champions between herself and Ripley. Um, in an ununified moment, we are NXT that really Ripley and Bianca Belair double team Charlotte and let Charlotte know that hey, don't you come in our house telling talking that nonsense. You take it right back to the main roster. But um Belair had her sights on takeover. There's no Commodity between these two beyond that point. So Rila Ripley and Bianca Belair are going to showcase their fight skills next week for the women's title next week. Also, Tommaso Champion Pete Dunn and Matt Riddle beat the Unspeeded Era by pinfall after a strong interfere in the post match. They were saved by the Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream returned. Velveteen Dream made it a mission. He came back. He took those tights off and made it like Rick, Rick Rue used to do with back in the day with Jake the Snake Roberts and his wife. But Rick Rue had Jake the Snake Roberts' wife on his tights. And now it comes full circle with Velveteen Dream had himself, Martin Strong wife, and their baby. Like he's their father. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. That is the ST report. Let's go to the AEW report. All right, on All Elite Wrestling, um, we just give some pointers. I just want to see what how like Jericho and um, his group, the Inner Circle, was at you know the commentary booth where Dean uh, um, John Moxley came out there and he went against Tor- at Tortiz or something. Yeah, went against him, beat him up. And the next thing you know, Santana came down there. Santana won the piece. Moxley got the keys and spiked Santana with the keys, car keys, and ran off like, like the Scotty Dollywood. And Jericho was not having it. So Jericho next week, you know, looking forward to it. But Santana looking forward to matching his um Moxley one for revenge on spiking his eye. Um Riho, Dr. Brick Breaker, I think, yeah. Yeah, that'd be breaker sending a message to our everybody. She even broke someone's teeth and caused them to bleed. And I was like, oh God, that the big breaker is turning here. And she made that comment about Tony Shavani and job shaming him. Tony Shavani has not worked at no Publix or nothing like that. Tony Shavani has been working, right? You know, they had to use Tony Shavani as an hour. Um also Nyla Rose attacked Riho with a power bomb saying that she's gonna send a message. Um, awesome Kong got attacked. The Nightmare Collective, they getting dissolved with Dr. Luke and the other woman, the bald head woman attacking Kong. Mmm, the best friends. They went against SCU, I think. So, like, SCU. Um, huge, the six man, the hey man teamed up with his tag team partner, tag team champion, Ken Omega with the Young Bucks. Against um, the the bunny, the blade, and um, who else? Yeah, who else? Um, the Lucha Brothers. Yeah, they lost because of miscommunication. But Hangman Page being angry or sick, so look for a Hangman Page heel turn down the road. Um, that was it. And finally, Cody Rose in MJF. Cody Rose went and took his shirt off and received 10 lashes. Cody Rose got 10 lashes received to him. People, different people from Cody Circle came out. R. Anderson came out. Dustin came out. Um, the Young Bucks came out. And Brandy, his wife, came out and said, you got one more. Just do this. I know I would take him if I had to, but you got one more. And Warlow had t- took a shot at Cody, too. So we don't want to forget that. Um, it was great, great storytelling, great. Everyone was hooked. I was hooked to the to the screen watching it. I shared a tear because I don't never want to see like 
I've been grow I grew up watching Cody Rose and I don't want to see like I looked at it and I said, Cody's tough. He make his old man proud because Dusty would have been proud of Cody because MJF, I feel sorry for you because you're gonna get the beating of a lifetime. I'm telling you right now. You think you awaken somebody's you took advantage of somebody's kindness, hardship. Now you're gonna have to pay the price. You're gonna have to pay the price. And Tony Rose is gonna make sure you pay that price one way or another. So I'm I'm just hoping you get through what you got to get through with this match because Cole is gonna tear you up piece by piece. And you deserve it. All right. Thank you all once again for watching this edition of the Pro Wrestling Show. I've been your host, Kendra Dick, saying so long, and we'll see you next time for another edition of the Pro Wrestling Show. Well, we have two shows. So we got one, Minds NXT, and the other one dedicated to NXT next week. Thank you all once again. We'll see you next time here.